Hello Year 10, it's Mr Rogers. This is just to help you with this week's learning. Hope you're well. So here I am, self-isolating, and uh, doing a solo walk along the beach just by my house. And um, we're just going to see some of the features that change to do with transportation and deposition, otherwise known as longshore drift. Over the past few days, rather than our prevailing wind coming from the southwest, it's been coming from the east and southeast, and this means that the pattern of longshore drift has changed. So at the moment, the side of the groins which are normally lower are higher. This reflects the dynamic nature of the coastline as well. getting wiped out by the sea so normally this side of the groins would be much lower than that side of the groins however it only takes a few days of having south easterlies and easterlies to change that pattern and so now as I'm walking west toward Littlehampton the side of the groins which is normally a lot higher is now a lot lower so these changes can happen very very quickly and in fact let's go up this groin to just find out what's happened so here we have and the high tides are only just coming up so this way is west to Littlehampton and east toward Brighton and you can see just here where there's a new little beach and up at this point, that reflects the normal pattern of longshore drift along this part of the coastline because our prevailing wind comes from the west. So if we walk along here, we see where the high tide has been coming to this past week. We've got a pile of material, beach material, on the eastern side of the groin down right the way to the beach and the sand on the western side and if we come up we can really spot where the high tides have been coming from just jump over here and this is where the high tides have been coming from and the normal pattern so this is what we normally see in Worthing and along this south coast and along this side is what's been caused by just a week's worth of different wind. Now what this can mean is that if we are doing fill work, and we do fill work just on one day, at one point in time, our measurements might not accurately reflect the general conditions of the area. And so that's why it's important if you're doing a real geographical survey that it makes uh, big decisions like the Environment Agency and which um, sea defences to build. You'd visit and take measurements at various days at multiple times. And it's where at GCSE when we just go for one day and in that day we only spend maybe a few hours measuring. It's really important to remember that what we measure is a fixed point in time and not necessarily the general conditions of the beach. In order to make that more accurate and to make our conclusions more general, we might want to either revisit the beach at different times of the year or under different meteorological conditions, or we might want to use secondary data, perhaps from the Environment Agency, perhaps from uh, a local field study centre in order to see if uh, there's any difference or whether our little sample um, reflects the general conditions usually found here.
Hello Year 10, I hope that you're all um, really staying well and I've put together just this little video for you plus some other little bits and pieces so you can look at longshore drift and transportation. Um, the work after it is really simple and remember this understanding of resources and materials will really help with more complicated things when we look at coastal management and so on. Uh, we'll also be having a little look at waves. So the work's on here, simple annotations, really know your longshore drift and I look forward to seeing you soon. Think of you all, missing you, you're my favourite group. And uh, when we get through this, uh, we'll crack on. If there's any requests for videos, please uh, put it in the comments and I can see what I can do. Bearing in mind, I can't go too far um, anyway, and neither can you. Stay safe, see you soon. Ta-da.